Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Fact Fiend Focus. Today, myself and Brad are talking about video games that haven't been remastered yet, but absolutely should. PS1 Edition. So Brad, do you want to uh, introduce this one for us while I take a sip of my drink? Because as usual, the Fact Fiend Focus is a drinking video while I'm drinking some lovely rum, and Brad is drinking something that isn't my rum. Yeah, so as people are very much aware, like remasters are not a new thing, but there's been like a, a, like a fad at the moment of remastering the PS1 classics. Like yeah. Crash Bandicoot's got it, Spyro's Spyro. got it. And, and Medieval, a personal yes. favourite of myself and Brad is coming back. So we thought, rather than just say video games that need to be remastered and just say like, all the old classics that everyone wants, like just remaster like Resident Evil 4 again. We thought we'd like delve into the depths of our minds and like, you know, Wikipedia to like find those PS1 classics we played as a kid that, you know, like someone should consider remastering next. And Brad, I believe you picked one to start us off that we are both Huge fans of that people may like will remember, but may not remember all that well. Yes, I will start us off with the first, not the second. I don't know what if that was any good. No, the second one sucks. The second one sucks. Nightmare creatures. Nightmare. Fucking Nightmare creatures. creatures. And like specifically, we're talking about the kind of remaster, like the Crash remaster, where basically the only thing they keep is like you know the name. Everything else is rebuilt from the ground up. Like not a, re a HD remaster, rebuild the entire fucking. Ex I want to see. Nightmare Creatures, which people might not have played, it's just like where you run around just killing zombies and werewolves with a stick. Um, I want to see that with like a Devil May Cry 5-esque like combo system built in. Ignatius and his huge staff just whacking people in half. Yeah, it's that game as well. It was like, it was somewhat like, no, trailblazing in one regard that you could dismember enemies. I remember that being a huge ass deal. Because you got the like the item that was like a little spinning buzzsaw and all mook enemies died in one hit and you would dismember them based on where you hit them. And I remember getting super hyped when I killed three werewolves with one swipe and cut them all in half. And I thought, <laughs> video games will never get better than this. But there's a particular reason that we both love Nightmare Creatures, yes. isn't there? And it's the sound effects. Yeah, they, all, like, they remake Nightmare Creatures in the ground, but keep the original sound, specifically the monster noises, which are the most stock-ass sounding monster growls you have ever heard. And they are played on repeat so much, they just grow on you. And it's like, what is it? Rawr. 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 And there's going to be clips in, so obviously you've got to hear them. Rawr. Yeah. I want every end, including level bosses, to make that noise. That's all they do. In that vein, another hidden PS1 gem I want remaking is Future Cop. LAPD. You could have sensed the, uh, you can, this one coming in. I, remember, I mentioned this in a video once and loads of people are like, I forgot that game, it was amazing. And if people don't remember it or they've not played it, it's a video game where you play as a robot akin to Ed 209 who like, fights for the LAPD and you can transform into a floating car and that's it. And it's multiplayer, so you can play like two people, you have a red and a blue car and you pick your weapon load out. And you get like, my favourite weapon being like you know the shockwave, which sends out like, a wave of sex energy. You can upgrade your weapons, and you can like there's puzzle solving elements, and there's like hidden weapons, there's level bosses, there's all sorts of cool bullshit. You've got to rescue civilians, and also because you're a giant robot, you can step on people because you can jump and land on them. And the best bit is every level ends like a comedy cutscene for some reason. So the game is very really tongue in cheek, and you have like a sarcastic Cortana esque. Like, woman on, like, the mic telling you what to do, despite the fact you are an unfeeling robot. And she talks to you like a real person. It's really strange. But I'll, I'll want to hear that done again. I hope nobody saw that. I, I love that woman's voice because it's the first game I distinctly remember where, like, the game reacts to things you do. And, like, when you get, like, specific power-ups, she's like, oh, yeah, that's the taser gun. Gotta love it. And it's like, fuck yeah, it's gonna taser every motherfucker in this bitch. Let's go on, what's your next one? All right, I'm gonna throw one out there. I'm not sure how many people have played this. Mm. It is Bugs and Taz Time Busters. Is that the one where Bugs Bunny has got, like, the helicopter ears? <laughs> And like, he's the one who can fly, but Taz, the yeah. one who spins, doesn't. So it's a two-player game. One of you can... T oh, you can play one player and switch between, or yeah. one can take the role of each one. And they both have their own unique abilities, and occasionally have to combine together to do something new. The reason I love it is because you don't often get 
those two player one single screen game. No, not anymore. Uh, no. At least not yeah, because obviously like, Future Cop LAPD is another one. Like, yeah. I would because I just want I want Couch Co op to come back. Well, I'm going to throw one out there. And it's probably the most well known game we're going to talk about today, and it is Final Fantasy VIII. You saying people won't know Bugs and Taz? Shut up. It's Final Fantasy VIII. Okay. Though, but like, I know Final Fantasy VII is getting remade from the ground up, and Final Fantasy X has been remastered like three or four times, but. People always, like, you know, hate on Final Fantasy VIII, and that's my favourite one. I want the world to know about Zell fucking Dink. The character from that game who communicates entirely through punching. See, in every Final Fantasy, you always have the character who's, like, the big tough guy. And in this game, you have Zell, who is, like, a high school student who loves hot dogs, who punches things. By the end of the game, he is doing 9-9, damage with every fucking hit as part of his limit break, which is a combo system, or a very basic one, where you've got input buttons to do punches. And obviously you can finish it off with like a, series, like a complicated button press that does like a, fi a final finishing move. And he can do 1.2 million damage through punching. And you can kill the final level boss in the game by repeatedly punching it in the knee, and then drop kicking it, and then finishing it off by running around the entire world and punching it as hard as you can. Soundtrack to video games like an underrated part of them, but I want to hear like a, a redone orchestral remix of Force Your Way, which is going to be a clip of like you know now. I want to hear that shit like remastered. It's like it's, it always got me mad hype as a kid. So there are any more hidden gems from the PS1 era you'd love to see remastered that probably won't get that, you know, that treatment? Crash 1 to 3 have been done and cra the hashtag fantastic, Crash yes. Team Racing it's is coming. coming. Um, but I I'm not sure, like, Crash Bash, I'm not sure how popular the fuck it is was. Crash Bash when it's at home? Do you not play Crash Bash? No. Crash Bash was their attempt at aping, um, which is the Mario game. Where Mario, you, Party. Mario Party. I know what you're saying yeah, already, yeah. Um, they were trying to ape that success by doing a crash version of it. Some of the minigames are really fun. Like One of the better ones is the one where you ride on a polar bear and you have to charge other people. You've played this? No, I mean, those are those my favourite level. Like, Hog yeah. Wild is my favourite mission in like almost any game ever. Because I love like the look crash. Hey, 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 hey. What, hey. what it is, is um, you is basically... Like, can, wait, before you said, can you do the tiger races against one another? Uh, no. Oh, well that game's worthless then. Unless they put that in. Because <laughs> the Tiger Race is on the Great Wall when you're playing as Coco Bandicoot are the best. I love doing Turbo Tiger missions. But it puts you on a circular platform with four, with three other opponents. But can and... you do Turbo Tiger missions? No, you can't do Turbo Tiger missions. So you can't do Tiger Races. Because I think when like, the Crash Team Racing comes back out, if Coco's not riding that Tiger from like, you know Crash Bandicoot 3, because that thing's fucking adorable, I'm not buying it. As an aside, because I've like you know recently played through like quite a bit of like you know Crash Bandicoot like one, two, and three, the remasters with a friend of mine. I got the high score with on that level, like right? you know the the Great Wall of China level with Coco on the Tiger, and I got like 14, 15 seconds, like basically a really good high score. Like we'd get you a platinum, and I just slid off the edge. <laughs> so that's all well and good, but I'm gonna throw a game out there that I think no fucker played, but everyone remembers, and that is the game Apocalypse, which I can see by your face you don't remember, and this was a like, a run-and-gun shooter where the main character was Bruce Willis. Voiced by Bruce Willis, with the, with the likeness of Bruce Willis, where you fight the four horsemen of the apocalypse with ray guns. Do you remember this game at all? No! Exactly, but it needs to be remastered, because I need to see HD remastered fucking Bruce Willis. Because apparently this was a game where they were contractually obligated to give him a little bit of hair. <laughs> and in all the cutscenes, he's got like a little bit of like hair at the back. And it's like, oh, Bruce, you're that fucking like vain about yourself. But I want that remake because I remember it being so fucking dumb. Because the game is like really fun. It's like, it's like, um, just like I said, run and gun. You get lots of cool weapons, you get like um, lasers. Gun. But the end fight, so like, what, what are the four horsemen of the apocalypse? Uh, the most common, like, rep interpretations in media now are war, famine, death, and uh, pestilence. Yeah. During this game, instead of war, and I think you have war, famine, pestilence, Joe, instead of death, Joe, you have yeah. beast. Do you remember that horseman? An X Man beast. And do you know what beast is? It's just a giant fucking, like, gorilla bull monster that you fight with a minigun, and it's great. What kind of a, like, apocalyptic event is that meant to be? I don't know. Of? I don't remember the story, so it'd be nice to replay it so I find out. I just remember that Bruce Willis is in it, and that Bruce Willis did all of the grunts of pain, and they all sound really bored. So whenever your character like, falls down, I was like, ah! <laughs> 
I love how we're picking games, not particularly because the game's great, because there's individual aspects of it that we really, I, Yeah, I want like, to see them. Like, <laughs> I want to see an animator remake this part. It's like I'm I'm wanting like a Silent Hill 1 remaster for the sole reason that I can watch Harry walking around going, have you seen a little girl? Short, black hair? Because he says it about 80 times. And I've been recently replaying through it with a friend. And uh, every time he says that, he goes, I'm looking for a little girl. I'm like, is she, is she short? Has she got black hair? Have you seen a little girl just turned seven last month, short black hair? So in that vein, do you know what game I want to see remade? Like to see how beautiful the cars will look? Whoa. Vigilante 8. Do you remember this game at all? I don't think I played no it. No fucker remembers Vigilante 8. And that was a car combat game. Do you remember when those were a thing? Where every character drives a different car and has a different special weapon. And my favourite was this big fat dude who drives an RV and his power is bees. And your ultimate weapon is a beehive that like, homes in on your enemy and stings their car to death. Not the bees. Yeah, and the game's fucking brilliant because like, I think one of the characters has like a lightning rod. He's a storm chaser. And his power is like, your special move is you call in a lightning bolt on your opponent. And you have destructible levels and as well, you have like a mortar round and that would like leave actual holes in the ground you could hide in from people and then like create jumps with it. So it had destructible environments as well. And you can like destroy parts of the map to create ramps to go over to shoot people. I want that. And I want my mate with the bees. I don't know what he said. So new editor, please put in the clip of the bee guy doing the bee attack. Because he said something very specific when he launched his bees. And I will say it to my brother every time he hated the bees. <laughs> These bees are coming. The bees are fucking, there's no, there's no escape. The bees are here. In the vein of like, you know, dumb combat games. How about Thrill Kill? A game that never came out, but was like um, eventually remade into Wu Tang Taste the Pain. So I want both of them. I want a. Do you know, we got like Crash 1 and 2 and 3. Yeah. I want a double sided pack with Wu Tang Taste the Pain remastered with the Wu Tang Clan, like, you know, reprising their role and Thrill Kill, the game engine they based it on. Which was like a game that was banned for being so violent, but it was like 99% done. So you could just download it and it still worked. And all the characters in that game are psychopaths. Like you have a, like a psychopathic BDSM midget who kills people by th shoving stilts down their throat. You have a cannibal who eats people. You have like a mass murderer serial killer who gets burnt alive, who comes back as a skeleton and has skeleton fire powers a la groundskeeper Willie in that one episode of The Simpsons. Then you have this giant gorilla-like creature called Mammoth who had potentially what might be my favorite attack in any video game where he does like a, he swings his hands down and then back up. And whenever you hit your opponent with that, they stayed in the air for about 20 seconds, during which time you could just like basically just dance around the arena like a jackass waiting for him. And in the same vein, I want Wu-Tang Taste the Pain to come back because that had the entire Wu-Tang clan in it and they've all got weapons representative of their lyrical rapping style. And like Method Man's got a hammer and the jizz has got like a, a sword on a, on a chain that he spins around and the riz has got dual katanas. It's fucking great. I want this shit. I think in today's cultural environment, the video game Thrill Kill would be seen more as like a quaint novelty. Like people are like, why was this controversial back in the day? Like one of the characters is a dominatrix who like kills you with a taser. I just want to see like the power of like the latest consoles harnessed for this dumb game that was created purely to cause controversy. And also, this game where rappers fight each other with ninja weapons. On that note, I think we'll uh, Yes, yeah, like, how do you top that? <laughs> how do you top that idea? Uh, if they announce that at E3 this year, I will lose my shit. Well, I'm gonna guess there's a lot of people right now thinking I've got a PS1 classic they've not mentioned. So uh, yeah, argue about it in the comments, but me and Brad now are gonna go download a copy of Wu-Tang Taste the Pain and play that shit. Let's go. Stuck on this. Stuck on this.